Any recording? We're recording now. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. It is August 28th, 2023. This is a special meeting of the town council and the remaining members of the Amherst School Committee. The open meeting law has, has been extended. This allows us to continue holding meetings remotely with, without a quorum of either body physically present at a meeting location while providing the public with adequate alternative access to the meeting. This meeting is accessible in real time via Zoom, by phone, and as a live broadcast on Amherst Media Channel 9 and through their live stream. We are not, however, in the town room tonight. Given that we have a quorum of the council present, I'm calling the August 28th, 2023 town council meeting to order at 632. I will call upon each councilor by name at that time. You should unmute your mic and say present. This will indicate that we can hear you and you can hear us. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present. Shalini Balmill. Present. Pat DeAngelis. Present. Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Lynn Griesmer is present. Mandy Johanneke. Present. Anika Lopes. Present. Michelle Miller. Present. Dorothy Pam. Here. Pam Rooney. I believe has informed me that she will be absent. Kathy Shane. I'm here. Andy Steinberg. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Alicia Walker. Here. At this time, I'd also like to welcome the two remaining Amherst School Committee members to this meeting. Uh, while I call your name, please unmute your mic and indicate that you can hear us and we will know then that we can hear you. Irv Rhodes. Irv Rhodes is here. Jennifer Shaw. I am here. And Jennifer, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, thank you for asking. Thank you. This meeting was originally posted as a joint meeting of the Amherst School Committee because at the time of the posting, there was still a quorum of the five members of the committee. There, however, is no longer a quorum of the Amherst School Committee due to resignations of three members. I have not asked the committee to be called to order because at present they don't have a quorum and therefore they cannot be called to order, they cannot meet, and they cannot take action. And right there should give you a sense of the urgency of our job tonight. <laughs> so, uh, however, we welcome their full participation and their thoughts in this discussion. And should we come to any vote, I will not ask them to vote, but I will just ask them if they would concur, okay? There's no chat room for this meeting. If you have technical issues, please let Athena and me know. To make a comment to ask or ask a question, please click the raise hand button. If technical difficulties arise as a result of utilizing Zoom, we will decide how to address the situation. Discussion may be suspended while we address technical issues and the minutes will note if a disconnection occurred. I will be monitoring counselors and school committee members connections. And if necessary, we will pause the meeting until you are reconnected. There is no public comment at this meeting and there is no change in the order of the agenda posted. At this point, the only announcement I'm going to make is that the next meeting of the town council is September 11th, 2023 at 630. With that, we're going to go over along to our one agenda item for the evening, and it is to discuss how we plan to proceed, how we would like to proceed with school committee vacancies. So each of you has, and it is in the packet, a draft memo with four attachments. Amherst Home Rule Charter, Section 4.1C, and Mass General Law, Charter 40, Chapter 43, Section 36, requires that the town council, working jointly with the remaining members of the Amherst School Committee, must initiate the process to fill the vacancies. Mm -hmm. And we have to do so within 45 days of the resignations. 
The process outlined in this memo was adapted from the process used by the town council and the school committee in March and April 2020, when a school committee member resigned. And that process was originally used by the select board. Our goal tonight is to review the process, the timeline, and the vacancy notice. The follow-up to this is to release a vacancy announcement tomorrow, if at all possible. So with that, I'm going to ask that we go in order of the items that are in the mem memo, and we will be glad to put them up on the screen. And But basically, the first one is the process, and I'm seeking questions, comments, suggested changes, et cetera. Please use your raise hand function. Jennifer. On the second page of the proposed process, the fourth bullet point, it says at least three days prior to the meeting, um, the town council president or designee provides all candidates, et cetera. But according to the timeline, it's two, two business days, as far as I can tell. It's 922 and 926, which is a Friday and a Tuesday. So just like, you know, they should be consistent. Yep. Thank you. Okay, I have two more things about. Please um, go ahead. So, um, still on pay, on on that page, which is page four of the document, at a subsequent meeting or after. So I know you have two meetings scheduled. You have one meeting and then a second meeting in case it's needed. How will it be determined if the second meeting is needed? It will be determined as we finish the first meeting whether it's reasonable to finish that night, unless in advance we have so many candidates that we decide in advance we need two meetings. And but is reasonableness like that just the time? Is the, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Well, question. you said, is it reasonable to continue that night or is to, to go to a second, to go to the second night? And is the reasonableness just regarding like what time it is or how long it has taken? Like what factors will be used to determine if that second meeting is needed? It, it will be the reasonableness uh, and how late we might go. Uh, I will say the last time we used this process, we did not go. We did everything in one night. We okay. did interviews. We took a break. We had a discussion and we voted. Okay. So my last thing is um, voting will be by roll call vote. The last bullet point on that page. And then each person will say, asking each their first choice, but we have three seats. So like how actually will the voting go? Will each person say three names Will you do it one at a time? Just, I think that needs to be clarified. That is a conversation that Athena and I have been having since I think Thursday, maybe Friday. And uh, we will, I would like to hear people's thoughts on it. But one of the options is when each person is, each of the 15 people that will be voting are called upon, they name their top three choices. And then we do some level of calculation. Yeah, I, I, I think that makes sense. Um, and I uh, so I think it makes sense for someone to, to say three names. It'll be more complicated for Athena or whoever's keeping track of how people are voting. Um, I, I think that makes sense um, in a way that doesn't like say this is the order of my top three. I don't know. It just It just seems like to say three names. And then to, to that point on the, the final, this is my final point, on the last page, the winding candidates, plural, and then and then Thanks. this last bullet point, just those candidates should be plural. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Athena, did you get all of those? No. Are you making edits or would you like me to make edits? If you'd like me to do so, then I, I'll just need to see. I'll, I'll need to ask Jennifer to remind me where, yeah. where they are. Uh, let's make those edits because I'd like to complete the evening with as close to a finished document as possible. Okay. So, First edit was Jennifer. Please just remind me. It was at least two days prior to the meeting, as opposed to at least three days. It was page four. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So that should be two days according to the timeline that's laid out. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, and then your next one was. Wait, was it, wasn't it um, f the Friday before? Yeah, it's Friday to Tuesday, which is two business days, right? Business days, yes. Okay, and then the next one? Um, well, in the last two bullet points, it should be candidates, 
plural. Um, voting, uh, the, the next page, sorry, last two bullet points of this. Uh, okay. Here, yeah, winning candidates. And on the in the next one, no candidates receive. Yeah. Okay. And then my other question was just how to describe the voting will be by roll call vote right. in the previous page. Right. Okay. I just want to remind people we're going to stick to the proposed process. So Mandy Jo, you're next. Oh, so briefly, if I if I might just say first, Lynn, the roll call vote. So the final vote to fill the vacancies will be a roll call vote, but how how the council and the remaining members take up indicating their choices and so on um is a little bit different than than the final vote, but it's still by roll call. Is that right? That's how we've discussed Usually, it. Usually after we get done, we take one final vote where we name, in this case, all three candidates. And that is a vote to just tie everything up. So that would be the final vote, correct? So in, in the past, in 2020, there was a sort of first round where um, members indicated their preference and then there was a formal vote and that was by roll call. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm sure we're going to need to spell out the voting process a lot more in, in a lot more detail. So anything else, May, uh, Athena? Uh, I, think, I think the voting process is clear. It's just that first round of how to how folks indicate their preferences and how we come to the three names if the council and members wish to vote them together or separately. Um, that part is we're we're working on figuring out how to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mandy Jo. Thank you. Yeah. So following up on that one, I just think that means based on what Jennifer said, the asking each their first choice needs to be highlighted because it needs fixed if we're going to be naming three in that first round. Um, as we discuss that further. Uh it, it was on page four, the last bullet point where you were. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll start with page three once Athena does that. Um, the fourth bullet point on page three uh, that starts the clerk of uh, candidate statements are due to the town clerk. Our timeline and all has them being submitted to the clerk of the council, not the town clerk. Um, and I think that's what we're going for. If we do that, though, there probably needs to be a sentence added in into the either the fifth or the sixth bullet point, I don't know which one's more appropriate, that the clerk of the council will forward the statements of interest to the town clerk for the purposes of confirming eligibility, because um, it's the town clerk that has to confirm the eligibility. And so I, I think that, yeah, that, that, that bullet point m might be the best spot to put something like that. Yeah. And you're correct. This it's basically, except for the confirming eligibility, the uh, clerk that is mentioned here is, in fact, the clerk of the council. Thank you for doing all the typing. Um, and at the end of that, the clerk's letter, it says, would be submitted to the transmitted to the council and relevant remaining members or a relevant board, I would also suggest it be submitted to our clerk, to Athena too. So transmitted okay. to the clerk of the town council, the town council and the relevant board members. Um, on, I just have two more things. Well, one more thing and then a couple of questions and they all relate to each, There's, they're all questions sort of. On the next page, page four, um, the first bullet point um, is there's no chair of the school committee right now, um, as far as I know. Um, and so I think we need to discuss how the develop interview questions bullet point is. I'm not sure it's exactly in conformance with the timeline below, which is that, but it says here that the president of the council and the chair of the other board would jointly develop the interview questions. So I think that needs reworded somehow. And we might be discussing that during this meeting as to how that's going to happen. Um, the next, 
bullet point um, has that the chair of the relevant board will also call a special meeting of that board. Um, That's only if possible. I, I, you could add if possible or or something like that. Yeah, um, just just to I know normally that would be what happens. Um, this is a rare circumstance when we're faced with so many resignations. Um, and then the last bullet point, going back to what Jennifer was saying, um, if we're trying to get how this is going to happen correctly, or or how this is going to happen and written down in a way that explains it as well as we can, um, I guess one of my questions would be, if on a first go round and every one of the 15 of us name three choices, one choice one person that's named has more than eight, eight or more votes um, and no one else does, how how do we write that in? Um, I guess I, I would be under the assumption that that person is tentatively nominated as one of those three and we're now naming two people in subsequent rounds to try and get to three people that have the support of eight or more members, but we haven't really talked about that. So do we have to go around and name three people until during one single round, all three, three people receive at least eight votes? Or are we kind of doing it in this rank choice sort of way where once someone crosses the threshold, that seat is sort of presumed now nominated at least because I know we do a formal vote and then we're dealing with two or one. So that's more of a question than a rewording at this point. So that that's the second. Uh, the, there's two issues on here so far that may need some additional discussion. Uh, one is uh, the gathering of questions and the other one is the voting process. Okay, uh, Kathy. Uh, I think we're all on the same page. So I was just gonna, um, you know, I, I think the, First one that Mandy flagged, we should just artfully rewrite it that we don't, we know there were only two members of the school committee. So there is no chair. So, you know, trying to work our way around that. You called the meeting today, Lynn, for tonight with the two members. So whatever process you did to get them in, this is the same one I would use. It's just my suggestion. So I don't know how we word that. And then on the, you know, if, depending on how many people we get applying, um, I think that suggestion of we each name three names with a one, two, three, and I, you know, if, if Athena can figure out some way of having an expel spreadsheet, some easy way that she can do the one, two, threes next to our name and next to their name, the 15 of us, so she could quickly tell us whether there were, someone had number one, listed next to their name with at least eight, I think it does make sense then go to go to now name your top two because in in a one and a two, because you may vary if my, well, everyone can see where I'm going. If my number three um, was someone else's number one, you've removed my number three, you know, so just some way of getting to now we do two and then we're down to the last one. Um, you know, it may be that we have a similar rank order. This is easier. So I, I, I'd like other people's thoughts, but I think that would go the most uh, quickly. Um, and the other comments I have, I just saw on those two things, I have some comments on the timeline, Lynn. So I'll just wait until we come back to the timeline. Sticking to the process for now. Okay. Yeah. Andy? Yes. Um, I've, you're addressing, of course, all of so the points that I had previously thought about. Um, one question that I have follows up on what Kathy said, however, and that is uh, I had assumed when I was thinking about it that each voter would would cast three votes and i analogized it to electing three counselors at large you don't rank them you vote for them and so we're counting the number of people who received votes but all votes are equal 
So I just wanted to put that out because it is a different interpretation that I understood that was being made in Kathy's um, suggestion. And uh, the other question that I have is that I may be misunderstanding, but I thought that um, there was a vice chair of the board of, um, of the school committee. And is that person uh, still sitting? And if that person is still sitting, uh, she, can that be a way of solving the problem? Otherwise, we have to come up with some uh, other method of doing it, such as the longest serving or something else. But uh, anyway, that those are what my thoughts were. Um, Lynn, I just want to say I agree with Andy. I didn't have to do a one, two, or three, so I, I think we have those two options. So, okay, let me let me just put that aside. And and Irv, you have your hand up, and I'm going to call on you because, in fact, Irv is the vice chair of the board. And um, Irv, would you like to speak to that role at this time? Right. I mean the uh, the policy says that the vice chair serves in the absence of the chair. Uh, now, there's nothing that says, well, with, when you don't have a quorum, does that, does that mean that the school committee does no longer exist? If it no longer exists, then there's no chair. Uh, however, if a quorum, if the quorum does not, not having a quorum does not define whether the school committee still exists, then the vice chair is the chair. I mean, and I have no answer to that. Okay, uh, Paul, I know that you've spent uh, some time looking at this. Do you wanna to speak to that at this time? Sure, so um, the, the, the position still exists, the, the school committee members still hold their position as school committee members. Um, and I think Irv is accurate in the sense that you know, as the elected vice chair who who serves in in the stead of the chair, um, can take can serve in that function. But that they answer. cannot call a meeting because right. they don't you, have a quorum. Right. You cannot. There is no committee at this point in time until there's a third member that's appointed. Right. So there's no meeting to be had. Right. But there are are some functions. At least I think I remember you telling me this, Paul. There are some functions that Irv can still perform and then report on them publicly. Yeah, and I think the uh, I my understanding is that the the school attorney will advise them on what functions the school committee can the school vice chair can take on those things. Some some of those are practical matters uh, as we relates to. Uh, the uh, sign signing of warrants, uh -huh. uh, which is an ongoing process that we are, we are trying to work through now and get some answers to. Right, but my um, again, Lynn, if, all... if I if I may, the 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 school committee does still exist, and Irv is still the chair. So when there is um, the acting chair, so when there is a quorum, Irv would act as chair once a quorum is reached. So. Um, but I think in this instance, it it doesn't really make sense that it would be in consultation with the chair because there's just one other member. Right. Right. So at this point, Athena has suggested this. Let me go on and get the rest of the comments and then let's see if we have any reason to discuss either of these further or what we're going to do. Dorothy. Um, I think that both members should be serving on the committee. Um, for the reasons that have been stated. Um, and, you know, when there is a, what you call a committee, then uh, Irv would be the, the head. Um, just as simple. I, I also don't like voting for top three choices. It sounds like ranked choice voting. We do not have that now. I think we should do separate votes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Michelle? Thank you. Um, so starting tonight uh, with tonight's meeting, um, it, it doesn't seem other than 
um, electronically that the public has a way to participate in this process. And perhaps that's the precedent that's been set previously. Um, but I see that for all of the special meetings, um, there will be no public comment. There's no public comment tonight. So I'm just wondering what outlet or what channel other than sending an email the public may have um, in terms of participating in the process. I um, am following precedent we've set in the past. This is in the, um, I mean, there is an election coming up. Uh, that is clearly the election in which the public expresses their preference. Uh, but for the purposes of this, which is an appointment that lasts a little over three months, in the past, we have not had public comment. So just to follow up, Lynn, on the last time this happened, I know it was a much longer period of time that the person was serving. And you're saying at that time, even there was no public participation in the process. That is correct. I mean, oh. people can send us emails or do general public comment or anything else they want to do, but we did not have public comment at those meetings. Okay. Um, and so I'm just wondering if this... Uh, this grouping of people has any thoughts on whether uh, creating a method uh, for public participation is uh, is appropriate. Um, I know that we have the ability to do so uh, with a special meeting, and we also have the ability not to do so. Um, so I'm just curious what other folks feel about that and whether it would be a, a benefit or, or make things more challenging. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dorothy, you still have your hand up. And Jennifer, I'm going to skip uh, and allow other people who have not spoken to speak next. So Anna, you're next. Thank you. Yeah, I um I had similar concerns to Michelle in terms of the the way that we engage the public on this process. I know it's a short term and I know we have precedent, but we also only have one turn of precedent, right? I think that we also are in a place where we can always figure something out and do it better. Um, and so I I think that where I would like to advocate specifically for a special public comment or um, some other avenue of engagement would be prior to the development of the questions that we ask to the candidates. Uh, I think that it'll be, that's one really important place where we can ensure that we are asking the questions that um, our community is, is feeling passionate about and concerned about. So while I think we all have a good grasp on that, and while I hope and believe our constituents know how to reach us, I think that that would especially be a point where we, um, where we would seek out and possibly have a special public comment period. Um, and then I also, I think, I think you said we were going to talk about the, the voting process later. Um, I do think it's going to need to be very clearly spelled out. And I do think that um, we have the possibility to go around in circles for a long time if we only vote one candidate at a time and they don't possibly get a majority. So for, for me, the only kind of logical way to do it is doing round or doing three at a time and then um, going back through kind of doing second rounds if, if um candidates don't get the um, the majority votes, which I think gets to my question, which was about that last bullet point. And I think, Mandy, you maybe asked this or, or clarified it um, down a little bit more. The last one, that highlighted one, um, I just want to make sure that it's clear that if one candidate does get the majority and the other two don't, we're still not taking them out of the process. Uh, and so phrase, phrasing that so that we can make sure we're not accidentally, I don't know, the wordsmithing of it, I think needs to be done. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, you've not spoken. Uh, yes, I just wanted to, um, I really uh, like on a suggestion about a way to engage the public by giving them an opportunity to suggest questions. Because although last time in 2020, they still, uh, the selected candidate was there for a long time, even though Who's, ever, who's selected in this process is only there maybe 12 or 13 weeks um, because some of because we already have candidates who are running for the school board, it becomes very political because one or more possibly of the candidates we vote for will also be candidates on the next election. 
and in November. And even though they wouldn't be on the ballot as an incumbent, you know, it gives them a certain exposure. So I think, I think it's even in some ways, it's at least as critical a decision as in 2020, even though the selected candidate was going to serve longer in 2020, because it's just so political now. So I, I think we do, you know, owe the, the public an opportunity to weigh in, in some way. Thanks. Anika? Uh, yes, I was going to hold, but seeing as we were talking about um, additions or what may not be seen, and please direct me if I'm just missing it. So I have also a question of, of uh, process, a little less political than as refers to the very short time period that we have here. And then even more so the time period that whomever the new uh, school committee members would be coming into um, with a with a lot going on, certainly not uh, lame, duck, lame duck season. So my question is around um, what for it's also fellow, fellow uh, counselors and Irv and Jennifer as well, uh, what does the council need to do in regards to onboarding or prep to help this in the incoming uh, committee members really ensure that they have all the tools to be successful? Um, what can we do to help? Is there some? Is there a period of time since this would be such a short transition that you know there would really be significant time to ensure um, that everyone is is really up to date and again having everything that they need to be successful within these roles for a short um, but certainly a period of high stakes. Okay. Uh, Herb, you've not asked questions, and so then I'm going to go to you and then back to Jennifer. I, I'm, I'm just wanting to uh, respond to Anika, is that in, the, in our, in our um, uh, rules and um, how we operate as, as a school uh, committee, uh, school committee, there is a uh, requirement of doing an onboarding, on, onboarding process uh, for uh, new members, and we definitely will put that into play. Thank you for that. Thank uh, you. And could I could I just respond? I did, thank you for that, and and just just please, I just would be very interested to know if there's anything we as counselors can do in our role to help with that. Thank right. You. I mean, yeah, I definitely will let you know that. Thank you, Jennifer. You have your hand up. Yeah, I want to encourage the town council to have a public comment period when it comes to it, it, when it comes to deciding which candidates to select. I, I'm, a, I'm neutral on whether I think there should be public comment on the questions. That's I'm, 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 I can go either way on that. But this is an important decision that's coming before the town council and the remaining school committee members. And we, you know, our our town's practice is to is to receive public comment on important decisions before we make them. So I, I would encourage you to have public comment uh, at the meeting before the meeting or whatever, at the meeting where this decision, the first meeting where this decision will be made. Um, it's true that this person, these three people are only gonna be serving for a short time, but they probably will be involved in like setting up the superintendent search. Probably, I mean, we, that's yet to be decided and that's a really important role. So I think it's it's a short period of time, but it's really important. It's an important period of time. And I think these are, this is an important decision and I would encourage you to have public comment. And then my second thing is just going back to the voting process. I, I I agree with what I think Andy said that this is not ranked choice voting. It should not be implemented as ranked choice voting. What I was trying to say earlier is that it seems the most efficient thing to do is to have each person in roll call say three names. And I would even say something like each person should say three names, but the order that you say the names is not going to be interpreted as your preference order. Just say three names the way you get three votes when you, as Andy said, when you vote on a for, for at-large counselor. Um, and then um, Athena should be able to tabulate how many candidates got how many just votes. And that seems to be the most efficient way of doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anika, you still have your hand up, uh, but Kathy has not spoken, I don't think. Yes, you have, Kathy. Please go ahead. Kathy. Um, I just, it, I'm only speaking to the issue of public comments. I very much like the idea at the questions, the formation of the questions um, to uh, last time uh, 
when you we have a set of the old questions and when I looked at them I'd want to redo them but I'd really want to get a lot of input including from everyone here but because I think that will tease out what Jennifer is getting at we we need to have an interview process where the the per each of the the people who are interested say something and then we're going to ask them a common set of questions and last time around we were inundated, Jennifer, with a vote for this person, vote for that person. We got hundreds of emails. It wasn't particularly helpful until you went through the interview process because you didn't even know, in some cases, who the person was and what they were going to say when you talked to them. So we have to, we have to move so quickly on this. I think the questions are pretty critical, and Lynn has in the current timeline, and I wasn't sure why, but she has two separate sort of a a draft set that we discuss and then a final set. But during, if we said we want some interest, if people saw the initial draft set that we come up with, they could respond to it and then it could be changed. So I just want to speak to, I like the question, question stage to get good, solid questions. We'll probably be influencing the questions the league and others pose to these, uh, these candidates. I mean, this is a, funny time of year that we're going to, an odd time of year, not ha-ha funny, um, time of year that we have to be uh, conducting this process. Andy? Yeah, following up on what Kathy just said, the general discussion about uh, public comment, I'm sort of in a quandary on it, but I think that I'm uncomfortable with the idea of having public comment because um, we're all in a very strange situation, and I mean all being potential candidates applying as well as members who are present today on uh, because of their membership on a body, an elected body, current elected body. But um, the um, there this is coming at the time of the election, and I'm afraid that public comment for those people who are applicants and are candidates on the ballot, that it is creating a platform to lobby and make speeches on behalf of a person which are not just directed at the council, but are directed at the community at large and are become a campaign tool. And I don't know that I wanna open up this meeting to that dynamic. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that we get a range of applicants that may include some people who are candidates, may include some former school committee members, may include some others who have interest or expertise. Um, but we won't know until we get there. So we're trying to create a policy that works under any range of possibilities because we don't know. And. Uh, but I don't think that I want to see this process become a platform for campaigning in the November election for one of the elected school committee positions. Yeah. Are there any other comments at this time on this process? I'm not, I'm going to go back, okay, to issues related to that we've identified here. One is the development of questions, which has now come up in two different ways. And the other one is the issue of voting. Uh, the issue of questions has come up in two different ways, including the possibility of public input. And I would also like to point out that there are numerous ways to obtain public input. Uh, and we can perhaps look at all of those as well. Jennifer, you're uh, actually yeah. on the Go ahead, Jennifer. I'll be quick. Um, when, when With questions like this, I always think, I ask myself, what is the most democratic thing to do? And the most, in my opinion, the most democratic thing is to allow people to express their opinions. You know, we, you all, we all are elected to represent the public. And I, I think the most democratic thing is to allow public comment. I don't think we should fear uh, or, or try to minimize campaigning or wh whatever. I, I, I I'm 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 not really concerned with what Andy's concerned about. Thank you, Mandy Joe. Um, 
I, I want to go back to that bullet point on page four that's about developing questions, but but I also want to give my support to Andy's um, comments on um, public comments during the meeting. Um, if we were to do public comments between, say, interviews and trying to make a selection or making a selection. Um, since we do not know who will apply, we have to be mindful of the fact that we are in open meetings, but also using town resources for these open meetings. And it's my understanding that um, candidates for election need to be given equal opportunity to use a town room or a, a municipal room for whatever if they are, but that in general, you're not allowed to use town resources for campaigning. So I think Andy's got a very good, uh, a very valid concern that, you know, since we do not know who will apply and that there could be some people who apply for this that are going to be on the ballot in November and maybe everyone who will be on the ballot for school committee in November will apply, but maybe some will not um, for whatever reason. And if we're opening up that particular meeting and forum for public comment, but only on the candidates who have applied for filling the vacancy, and some of them are also on the ballot, it could potentially be construed um, an open public comment period about that, that you can only comment about the candidates that were considering for the appointment. Um, if it turns into campaigning in general, it could be construed as not giving all candidates on the ballot equal opportunity to use those resources. I, I don't know whether that's, uh, whether I'm thinking about it inaccurately or not from that legal point of view, but um, I think we need to give what Andy said um, a lot of credence and validity that that it could present some problems for the town because of what's going on there. Um, with the bullet point that that is up here, the wording that I, I like Athena's with the input from the remaining members of the other board, but we also have these two meetings and I think it's important to have the two meetings. Um, and, and so I don't think this bullet point conforms with the timeline is I guess what I'm gonna say, because right now the timeline says uh, remaining school committee members and counselors get questions to Lynn. We'll have on September 11th, a discussion on those questions. They will be a draft. And then on September 18th, a final version will be produced based on that discussion on the 11th and maybe any other comments that come in. And I just don't think this bullet point right now comports with the timeline and what's done there. So I think it still needs some rewording because of that. So let me um, let me see, I, I, for the moment, I'd like to stay on the issue of the development of the questions. And let me see if, uh, let me try something out and then um, see where we are. So prior to the meeting on the 11th, we could develop a mechanism online using uh, the town's website for people to submit questions. And in addition to that, I could consult with, including counselors, okay? And I could consult with the two members, remaining members of the board, and we could come up with a set of preliminary questions that would come to the council on the 11th. Okay, so it's a fast turnaround, but we don't have a choice. Uh, and then on the 11th, we can discuss those questions. And then possibly on the 18th, we would have a final set of questions. So that way we would seek broad input in the initial development of the questions, but not through public comment, but rather through a uh, electronic mechanism using um, our website that we have used for many other options of input. 
uh, and that's one option. And then um, trying to whittle it down so that again, if you've got 10 candidates, you're not sitting there for gazillions of hours. Um, I think we want to keep the number of questions uh, down to a certain number and so forth. Um, that, to me, that way you get a sense from the public about what they feel is most important in this interim. And at the same time, you get a sense from Jennifer and Irv, who are both uh, very involved in this interim period and will be very involved and are much more aware of the uh, processes that are going on. And all of them have input into what will be the most important things that could or will happen between the end of September and January 2nd. Um, so that's just a suggestion. I, I, No suggestion of mine is ever sacred, so please take it for what it is. Andy. Yeah, I just wanted to point out while we still have that bullet on the screen, I think there's a redundancy that's unnecessary because it says the president of the council with input from the remaining members of the other board, if any, and the chair of the other board in consultation with re their respective members. It's sort of like it's picking I, up the same. I just didn't delete the second part yet. Twice. Yeah, I, 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 th I think it was put there to just not to show it before we delete it. So we would now delete that. Okay. Okay, so again. I don't, think, I don't think we can delete the in consultation with the respective members because you delete that and you're not consulting with town councilors. Um, so what if we just change this to town council? The pre is it prior to the meeting, the town council with input from the remaining members of the other board, if any, will jointly develop interview questions. And that took that happens on both the, the 18th 11th and the 18th. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, you have a comment. Just coming back to the public comment, I, I um so there are two regular meetings prior to the meeting, the special meeting. And I think our rules allow for during general public comment for folks to comment on anything that's within the purview of the council. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So there would be an opportunity twice for folks who wanted to comment um, during those regular meetings. How do people feel about setting something up on the town? I'm blanking on the name of the other website we use when we go for questions. Engage Amherst. Engage Amherst. Thank you so much. Um, if setting something up on Engage Amherst where p the public could submit questions prior to um, the fifth of the month or maybe even a little later. Does that satisfy the idea of having more public input into the questions? Mindy Jo? Um, it, it sounds like a good idea, but I caution us. I would ask Paul whether he believes Brianna, who generally has done all of the setting up for all Engage Amherst stuff and monitoring much of it, has the capacity to do that in such a short period of time, given um, when she is leaving? Good question. Andy? Yeah, so we're flipping back and forth because of the order. But getting back to that bullet, um, I think that the better wording would have been to go the other way as far as what was being eliminated. So it would be prior to the meeting, um, the president of the town council and the chair of the other board in consultation with their respective members will develop interview questions and i just um 
that can be done. I, I'm just trying to make sure it can be done just the way I will send something out to you. I will ask you not to respond, reply all, or I'll ask you to send things to Athena and we'll compile all of it and then come up with a proposed process. Uh, it's, so I wanna be as transparent as possible, however. Um, uh, Dorothy. Uh, I don't think that an electronic bulletin board uh, serves as sufficient public comment. Um, I think that what Michelle mentioned sounded reasonable that people could comment during regular town council meetings. Thank you. Paul, you put your hand up, so I'm going to call on you. Yeah, I, I do have concerns about us being able to support the Engage Amherst platform at this point in time with Brianna's uh, departure. Um, so I would really have to look into that and see if we could support that before we offering it. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Pat, you have your hand up? Yeah, uh, I know, given that we might not be able to do the Engage Amherst, I like putting that uh, aside. I like the idea that the public could submit questions. And I also heard you, Lynn, initially, when you were talking about saying counselors could submit their questions there too. And so could the uh, two members of the school board. I think that sort of levels uh, the playing field between the public and um, the boards, the committees. The other thing that it seems to me is we're not talking about public comment when we're creating the questions. That's a separate process. Uh, Michelle came up with a good idea for public comment, but... Um, the question development, we, we need input from the public and the two boards, <clears throat> and we need to move from there, but we don't need public comment on those questions. That's a different thing. Um, right, so the, what's not stated here is that there would be a process by which um, I would receive suggested questions. Boy, this is getting complicated. And I don't know about the rest of you, but um, I do have other things to do besides run meetings. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, that was just my question. If we couldn't use the Engage Amherst, what would be the process? I, for? I, I, one process could be to use the general public comment feature that we already have. That's the only other one that I can think of that captures it all and doesn't rely on an individual, um, me particularly having to make sure I've caught every email that is sent. I, I that's, That is an impossible task. It's as right. impossible as whatever. So is the way we would get word out to the public by uh, through counselors, um, you know, letting their mailing constituent mailing lists? Yeah. Guiding them. Yeah. Certainly one of the ways we can also post, post something, you know, um, post something on the town's bulletin board. If you have, if you, there are questions you would like to see included, no promises made, you would like to see included, please submit that as general public comment, something like that. Mandy yeah. Joe. I I'm I'm feel like I'm digging a hole that is just not doable, but I just want to be honest about that. So I guess I'm still trying to figure out what what this that the bullet point still doesn't I, I don't like the wording that was originally there. Um I, I guess meeting prior to which meeting, I think we're referring to the special meeting where we do the interviews in, in this bullet point, but I'm, I'm not sure. Right. And so I think that's what part of my confusion is. Um, someone has to by September 11th, present the council according to the next attachment, attachment B or whatever, or C or wherever the timeline is, um, present the council with a list of proposed questions or preliminary questions. And um, so we have a couple of questions to figure out or decisions to make or consensus to reach, which is who presents the council, who's gathering those questions and producing that document. Um, 
And then the next question is, will the council be voting on the final list of questions? Right now in our, on, on the way the council uses its policy for recommending ZBA, planning board and finance committee, the committees themselves actually adopt a set of interview questions. So the question I would have is, are we planning on September 18th as a council um, with input, because I know unfortunately the two school committee members cannot vote, um, uh, adopting a set of questions or is um, the way this one, this bullet point right now reads that original language is that the president would basically just decide what the questions were once receiving the input and I'm not comfortable with that. So I think we need to come up with a consensus on is on September 18th, the council voting to adopt a set of questions and who by September 11th is drafting the preliminary set of questions to be discussed on September 11th before the final questions are brought, the final proposed list is brought back on September 18th. Um, I support finding a way for the public to give input in what those questions could be. One way of, although then you get, as, as I've done as a chair, you might end up with four pages or for this, you, we might end up with 10 or 11 or more pages of questions. And someone's going to have to present that. Many of them will come in with very similar ideas and all. And so I, I would support creating a document that has every question submitted to the council by counselors, by remaining members of the school committee, by the public, but then someone needs to essentially condense that into a logical number of questions um, to present to the council too, so that there'd be two documents on September 11th is how I'm foreseeing it. One that has all of them that were submitted and one that is the draft preliminary set of questions, whether it be seven, eight, nine, ten, figure out that number. Um, okay. So Major Joe, first of all, this has to be done prior to the interviews. It and it has to be done and voted on by the council with and with, you know, some comment or whatever from the um two remaining members. So let's back it up from the 18th. The 18th is when we have to finalize these because our process is to make those public those questions public and to make those questions public to the public, to the candidates, to the uh, school committee members and to the council. Uh, the second thing is that, um, I mean, I having done research using content analysis, uh, there is a way to condense even 11 pages of questions. It's not fun, but there is a way to do it uh, using content analysis and grouping and coming up with a way uh, to come up with questions. Um, I, um, I need to think about the best way to get that done. I, I really have to say that is not a small task uh, it is a huge task, uh, and um, it's not a task that we can we we can't assign it to a committee. No committee has that kind of time. So, um, but without question, I believe that the council and the two remaining members of the school committee need to be looking at a draft on the eleventh and adopting a draft. Of adopt, adopting the questions on the 18th. So that's firm. How we get to those questions is still the question. I still, well, it is the question. Jennifer. So I'm hearing Lynn say that this is getting really complex. And I, from what I'm, I'm hearing, like it's, I, 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 it sounds like I don't need to over-engineer the process of coming up with a list of questions. I, I'm going to maintain that First of all, I don't think this body needs to, well, maybe this body will need to vote to approve the questions. I, I, we don't, I, I think this needs to be simplified as, as Lynn said. I, I think that the decision before this body, the most important decision is choosing the appointees. Um, that's for my, that's my priority in getting input from the public. I don't really think we necessarily need to prioritize 
uh, input from the public on the questions. I mean, you know, we were elected to serve the public like the, and every other decision that this body, that the two bodies make, we come up with information, we get input from the public on what how, what, our what our decision should be, and then we make the decision. I, I think we can simplify this by having Lynn as the president and Irv as the vice chair take input by September 5th, have the two of you come up with, with both of what you know of the job and, and the town, come up with a proposed list of questions. I don't need to see every question that everyone has submitted. I don't wanna see all of that. You two come up with a proposed <laughs> list of questions presented to us on September 11th, we'll discuss it. I'm gonna say at that September 11th meeting, there should be public comment the way there is at every town council meeting so that the public can comment on the questions then. And then we talk about September 11th, we vote on it the 18th. Like I, I think that we can streamline this a lot by just, by just empowering the president and the vice chair to, to come up with a draft list of questions. Thank you. Dorothy? Uh, I agree with a lot of what Jennifer said. I, I think there's been talk as if these questions are magic. They are not. These questions have the questions that are needed for this job have been asked again and again. And um, there's records that are written down. Um, so I, I really, the idea that we're going to take all this time thrashing around for the magic questions is, is to me, a waste of time. And I don't, and I don't really want to do it. So I suggest uh, that we go and find the questions that have been asked in the past and that the, uh, the committee of two that Jennifer suggested look at them and that uh, town council members be asked after they see the list if they want to ad sub submit an additional question. And that should be pretty quick. That's my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michelle? I'd like to further support that. Um, and I, I've seen, Lynn, you work... Uh, magic, if that's a word we're using, <laughs> um, to condense and group questions. Um, and I think that if there's a missing question, if there's an error, it will be known somehow, some a counselor or somebody on the school committee that's remaining or a public person will, um, will let it be known. So I'm not as concerned about, about that. And Jennifer, I, I, I think you said, um, so September 11th is a meeting of the council. And so I think then um, public comment would would be um, part of that process as well. Thank and you. one of the things we may consider is if we're going to invite the two other remaining members of the school committee on the 11th is we may call a special, no, we may call a special meeting in which there is public comment before our regular meeting just i'm trying to make sure that the town council with all of this on its plate continues to attend to its other business and that's important for us uh irv so if the, in terms of developing the questions uh the reason for um having public input on that is if that is a value of the of the council to have public input on this particular issue, then you should carry through on that value by asking for, for public input uh, to develop those questions. Uh, and, and, but that's all the value, that's, a, that's your values that you have to decide is that a value. Uh, in terms of practicality, the questions that uh, have been asked before, uh, uh, those uh, can be definitely used and utilized and be as 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 good as any of the questions are going to come. Uh, the other thing is, it really doesn't matter if you go out and say, we want public input. And so uh, we want you to uh, suggest questions. Uh, so send them in to us. Uh, <clears throat> I can assure you that... Uh, Chat GPT can do a great job of reducing those questions down to what we need. I was looking for a place to apply this. Now I've seen one. Yes, um, it, 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 I can tell you from experience, recent, they're taking mounds of data and input and, and putting it to Chat, chat GPT to reduce to a set of, of, uh, of, of questions, principles, topics, et cetera. It is amazingly good at. Interesting. Um, Alicia. Um, thank you, Lynn. I, I actually don't disagree with Irv. I think that could work. But um, 
I originally was going to say that I think a process similar to what Dorothy described would work and that we have you all uh, draft up the questions and then have another meeting where if we have questions that we feel strongly about that were forgotten that we have those added. Um, and I do also agree with Michelle's, Michelle's suggestion in that we should still have a public comment period um, after that. Okay. Uh, Shalini, I'm gonna come to that issue in a minute. Uh, Alicia, any other comments on question development? Oh, I agree with what's being, I agree that we need to understand what is important for um, our residents. We kind of have a sense of what's on their minds, but I, they, I, I'm with the people who are saying we need to ask people and in, get input about questions uh, that we should be asking. And I also want to acknowledge what Andy said that by allowing people public comment, so I we can have public comment generally, but with, but not at the point of where we are discussing the specific candidates because of what Andy said that if some of the people who are running for school committee in fall are, I'm just saying this, repeating this in case it was missed, but this is how I'm thinking about it, that if people are running in November and they are here and then we have public comment promoting those people and we're just, you know, it is highlighting and giving them extra uh, publicity that's not gonna be democratic and fair to all the candidates that are running. So I think it's very important to hear our public and residents, what, it, what do they want from the next round of, or at least for this interim, this is a very important role they're gonna be playing. So what are the questions that they want to have answered? And, uh, and then they have elected us and trust us that based on what's on their mind, we are gonna have a discussion and make the selection that is best. Okay. So that would so be my. I would like to edit the sentence that is below. Prior to the first discussion of the questions, No, not of uh, the interview questions. Yes, thank you. At a joint meeting of the town council and the remaining members. Okay, and then take the word interviews out, but leave a comma the president of the town council and the chair of the other board in consultation with their respective members and in consideration of public input will jointly develop a first draft of interview questions. Uh, I, we may need to address what happens then. Uh, which would be at the second council, at the second discussion of the council, at the second discussion of the interview questions at a joint meeting of the town council and the, and the re remaining members. Um, members of the other board a vote will be taken as to the final set of questions or something like that. It's, um, wordsmithing is always welcome. Mandy Jo, you have your hand up. So I hate to throw a wrench in that wording. Um, Why? I don't care. <laughs> interview questions. When there were two separate boards, you could potentially argue that Maybe they were doing it for their own separate meetings. But I would like Athena's input on whether that wording creates a subcommittee that requires compliance with open meeting law. Meeting where where you have the town council meeting well, with jointly no, the, the president of the council and the chair of the other board will jointly develop interview questions. 
Hmm. Normally we say if you have more, if you assign the task to more than one person, you develop, you've had a subcommittee. In the past, it's always been the two chairs and you've been having a joint meeting. So you could argue that each chair is developing the questions for their own separate meeting. But we're in this weird situation where there isn't a separate meeting for one of the bodies. Um, Athena, thoughts? It sounds like what you're trying to achieve is that you and you will compile the interview questions from counselors and remaining members of the school committee with public input and present them to the council and remaining members of the school committee on the 11th, and then the council will adopt them on the 18th. Is that correct? So I think what we need to do is say, prior to the first discussion of the interview questions at a meeting of the town council remaining members of the board, the president of the town council with input from the remaining members of the other board. So in other words, Irv and I will not meet. You're going to compile questions with input from counselors, the remaining members of the board, and, and in consideration of okay. members. That's correct. Right. So okay. Words, so we're going to take to the, what Mandy Joe is concerned about. We're going to take uh -huh. out. Did we lose audio? No. No, I'm just typing. Just typing. <laughs> <laughs> We're just amazingly quiet, Irv. Yes, astonishingly um, so. Now, the only thing is it should be... Um, yeah, there you go. Of the other board. Of the board. Um, does that? I believe that captures it, but I'm looking for others' input. Uh, Irv, you have your hand up. Um, I, I just, I really appreciate all of this. And I also wish people to understand that when this process is over, uh, we will be um, um, into the budget, pro budget making process for the Amherst schools. And that the uniqueness of the situation is that the people who will be dealing with that, those, the budget for the Amherst schools, uh, the school committee, Amherst school committee, all five of us could be there in January, January, or none of us could be there in January. And there could be a completely different group of people there. Right. And so I, I just want people to understand and appreciate the uniqueness of this situation and the challenges that the Amherst School Committee uh, uh, is facing and will be facing going forward. Um, so Irv, uh, Jennifer, do you have a comment on this particular item? Please go ahead. I just, it, it seems like that this new text seems to remove the vice chair of the school committee from involvement in compiling the interview questions. It doesn't remove them. It has them providing input uh, like as as does it also include you giving input, but it avoids the issue of whether or not we have created a committee that then meet, needs to meet in public. That's this is, what this is Mandy That's Joe's what concern about creating a committee of two. Yeah, exactly. I don't love it. 
Well, I don't love a lot of things, but I'm trying to also get to a process where um, we, we can live with it. Mandy Jo? Uh, none of us generally love it, Jennifer, but I want to say what we normally say in council committee meetings is nothing in this wording prevents the president of the council from consulting with anyone she chooses before she presents the document to the council. So um, it just ensures that a formal committee, subcommittee is not created. Right. So I'd like to move on to the other issue and that is the issue, um, no, I don't wanna, I wanna actually take a segue to the issue of public comment. And I, um, I, also was on the council at the time we replaced the last school committee member. Uh, it was a very different circumstance. There was, the election was of the future committee was in way in the future. I wanna point out to the two people who are presently on the school committee who are with us tonight. First of all, thank you for hanging in there. But I also wanna point out that if we start having people make public comment about the candidates as we're interviewing them, it is disadvantaging you as a candidate for office because we are not going to interview you that night. And right there creates an uneven playing field because you as candidates for office, since both of you have taken pa out papers, I'm aware that's your intention, um, would be disadvantaged because we wouldn't interview you. And so I really hesitate when we have a general election for offices across five different uh, boards and or appoint or um, positions um, coming up soon after this to create an uneven playing field for you and for any candidate who decides not to apply for the interim position for whatever reason. Um, so that's a, something I just felt I needed to say. Um, Dorothy. I think we've gone around the room now. Um, we were gonna have public comment on questions. Now we're not gonna have public co comment on questions. I don't see, if you decide the two people as a committee, I don't see anything wrong with there being a meeting with public comment. We were gonna allow public comment on questions and now it's out of the question. Um, I don't, I don't really like it that. putting the uh, vice chair of the school committee uh, out of any official role. Um, so I, I just think that you're making things more complicated, not easier. Uh, Dorothy, we are going to have public comment. We will have two council meetings at which we have public comment. Anybody can make public comment. Then why can't you have, why can't you have the meeting that you originally put forward before Mandy said that would be a committee and you can't have a committee if there's no public comment. I'm saying, okay, have a committee, have public comment. That's what I'm saying. Are you suggesting Irv and I should meet as a committee, have public yeah. and have public comment and the two of us sit there for 10 hours and listen to the public? I doubt that there'll be very many people tuning in. I truly do. You think there's some magic in these questions? I mean- I don't personally think there is magic in these questions. So that's, it's, it's the public but comment. I am also- What you brought up was public comment when candidates are being voted on. I totally agree with you. That would be not that good. The only time, only place I have- mentioned public comment. I have no problem with people coming to town council meetings, making public comment about anything they want to make public comment about. And we have two council meetings at which there will be public comment. Mm -hmm. So we're not, we're seeking public input to these questions. I, I think I mentioned earlier, we could use the general public comment form as a way of doing it. And that puts the burden on I'm expressing some concern over the fact that the town council, at least in my five years, I don't believe we normally choose uh, school candidates. So not to have the existing vice president of the remaining counselors 
in an official role seems to be putting it in an off balance situation. So I'm just in terms of what it looks like. So I think that's not a good move. That's my suggestion. Okay. Um, Jennifer. So regarding public comment, I had originally thought there would be no public comment, like there was no public comment tonight. I thought there would be no public comment period in the meeting or meetings when in the one or two meetings when we vote on the appointees. But I think I'm hearing that they're gonna be regularly scheduled town council meetings and there will be a public comment period at the beginning of the, no? Yeah, let me clarify, Jennifer, okay? At the meeting in which we interview the candidates and uh, discuss and vote, there will be no public comment. That is the plan at this point. Okay. However, uh between that meeting and now, the council has two regular meetings coming up and we will have public comment at those meetings. Okay, but I believe those meetings are both gonna be before the list of candidates is finalized. So I wanna encourage you to have public comment at the meeting when we will be voting to appoint the candidates. I hear, you, I hear people saying they're not in favor of that, but I wanna encourage you to have public comment at the beginning, maybe I don't. I don't think it needs to be like during the deliberation period. Like we don't need to ask questions and then have public comment and then deliberate. Just like have an open public comment session at the beginning of the meeting, the way you do for all town council meetings. Th that's that's what I would like to see the town council do. But I want to comment on what Lynn said about how it would benefit Irv and me as candidates to not have public comment about the appointees. I, I'm a, I'm trying to wrap my head around that. I'm a little dumbstruck at the idea. That, I, that we should make decisions based on what might help or harm us as candidates in a, I, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless that that would even come up, that Lynn, you would suggest that we should make this decision to not have public comment because it would benefit us as candidates. I, that, that's completely inappropriate and possibly unethical. I, I'm, I'm really surprised that that came up. I think you misheard me, but that's okay. Pat. Yeah, I'm I, I'm uh, a little concerned about the comment and I may have uh, misheard it too. I heard it differently than Jennifer, but it seems to me that Jennifer and Irv are on the school committee and anything that happens publicly, whether they're involved in a council meeting or anything else can benefit or harm their candidacy because they're running in November. They're, they're incumbents. Um, so I don't think that they should be kept out of things or, or, or they're just a part of the school committee. Um, and so it, it does seem to me that there is a, a concern about fairness that is misplaced. I think it's coming from a very good place, but I think it's misplaced. I, again, I think I was misheard, but go ahead, Andy. Yeah, I mean, we're going around in circles on this question yep. of comment about the candidates. And I really think what it comes down to in large part beside is an additional question is whether there's, and, and Mandy had touched on this, whether there's a violation of campaign finance law and I think that we really, before even considering a vote on this topic, uh, I'm not saying discussion tonight, but before a vote on this topic, I think that we need to consult town attorney and we possibly need to consult the Office of Campaign Finance because uh, there's, um, What's happening if we do had do a public comment is we're allowing a certain level of politicking to take place with public resources, and that's flat illegal. Thank you. Uh, Alicia. Um, thank you, Lynn. So I would be in favor of having um, an additional public comment period during the selection phase and I, I don't think I quite, I'm quite, like I, I hear and understand the political aspect because it's so close to a campaign, to like an election season and because some of the people who may place their name 
as someone interested may also be running for office. But regardless of whether or not we have a public comment period, those individuals will have this extra platform, if you say, because they will be answering the questions. Those questions will be made publicly available. Um, they are already putting themselves on a different kind of display than candidates who would, might choose to not submit their ma name for this. So I don't think that that will be amplified anymore by having people come in and public comment and let us know how they feel. Um, maybe we can add some specifications in terms of when people public comment, they can't say, we want you to vote for this person in the election. But I think that's very different than having people public comment and say something along the lines of, you know, based off of their answers to these questions, we would like this person placed in this specific role of the interim or the placeholder or whatever you call it. But I think that it's very different. And I would still be in favor of having another public comment period. And I think um, I'm, I'm looking at it in terms of what just happened when we needed an interim superintendent in the school committee level. I know that's a little bit different, but there was public comment after the questions were answered. And so that's why I'm not understanding why it would be different in this position if we can just indicate that we can't have people saying vote for so-and-so in the upcoming election. Anika. Uh, yes, thank you. So I just, you know, I just wanted to know it's eight o'clock and just about and why I know we're here for as long as it takes. I'm wondering if we could just get some clarity around what is and what is not um, allowed just in terms of campaign regulations so we know and we could have that guide the public comment. I think we're all on board and we all support as much um, engagement with the public as possible and hear what they want, but we also, you know, this is extremely important and I don't think we want to make mistakes based on what we individually think can or cannot happen or agree with. And so I'm hoping that if we can just get some clarity, we don't want to, you know, eye ourselves into maybe having someone disqualified because we thought it was okay or, or wasn't okay. So, you know, again, maybe some clarity just around that we could, that could facilitate and guide when we have the public comment in the event that we may need to have it as, as soon as possible. I mean, it may, from what we're hearing and don't know, don't have clarity to, it might be something that we need to have um, as soon as possible, maybe before we have um, submissions or before submissions are made public, if that's even possible at this point. I think we can get clarity tomorrow. I don't think we can get clarity tonight. For one thing, the Office of, of Campaign finance is not open. Um, so, but I do agree that we need to get clarity on this particular question. Anna? Uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm kind of, I'm not going to lie, I'm still a little stuck on how uh, enabling public comment could lead to a campaign finance violation. Um, we have public comment now. Candidates for office can make public comment now. Um, I, I think we're I don't understand how that couldn't be a really, really slippery uh, rabbit hole there. And I think that my second point is this is one of the this is kind of one of the reasons why I had initially said where I would like to see public comment is when we generate the questions, because that is honestly, in my opinion, how we minimize politicking in this, if, if that's what we're seeking to do, because we're seeking input not on candidates, but on how we are looking at those candidates when we seek comments on what people want us to be asking on what people want us to be considering when we look at the um, at the candidates it's not even about which candidates are there it's about how we are approaching this task and and how we're basing those decisions on on answers right making sure that we are asking everything that is important to our constituents to me that is the most important part of this because it doesn't it's not that it doesn't matter who the candidates are. Of course, it matters who the candidates are. But the best way to understand who the the best folks for this job are is to make sure that our questions are fully reflective of what our community needs. So, and that we're consistent in that ask. That's why I do think that the most important time to gather public comment is when we're generating the questions. What matters to you that you need us to ask as we go through this process? Um, and I. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm really concerned about the discourse around public comment and 
politicking and we have public comment now people can do that now if they really want to uh, i don't i'm a little lost on that one so apologies if i'm missing some major source of information that would enlighten me there thanks oops sorry michelle I, I'm also feeling a little bit lost on that. Um, so I appreciate your comments, Anna. Um, but I, if there is any concern, and of course, we'll only learn that through legal counsel, um, given that nomination papers are due on September 19th, I would imagine that nobody is considered a I, I, I maybe they are considered a candidate, but until those papers are uh, submitted with the appropriate number of signatures, um, we don't have any real candidates, I think. So September 18th uh, is, is a meeting that happens before that date where there will be general public comment available. So um, I do think it's worth looking into, but I also want to agree that it feels uh, that I'm not quite sure I understand the way that election finances work enough to say that that would be uh, something that we should hold with high concern. Thank you. Irv? <laughs> You know, the the uh, issue that you raised, Lynn, is real. I mean, it's a real. Obviously, if you're if we're having uh, voting, for instance, there are two there are two times when two important times where public com comment are going to be taken. One at the collection of question stage, the question collection stage, and two on the the night and the evening where the votes are, votes are going to be taking place. Now, uh, for the first one, in terms of uh, question collection stage, that's that's a you know public comment is you know that's that that would be no different than almost other other meetings. However, on the evening when uh, votes are going to be taken, in terms of who is going to be on the uh, school committee, and you are, and if you allow public comment, and I'm saying not, not saying whether you should or should not. But if you allow public comment, then uh, what Lynn's saying is a possibility. That is, that there will be people who will be coming forth to make public comment who will be supporting those people who uh, have applied uh, for uh, membership on the school committee. And therefore, they would uh, be promoting that person. If they are then promoting that persons and any other numbers of people who there will be promoting, that would in effect disadvantage those people who are incumbents from that kind of exposure. That's what I understand Lynn to be saying. And, and is that something that should be a question that is considered? I consider it to be a fair question uh, and that it's an issue. Uh, and whether it is a, you know a, an issue that rises to a level of wow we are stifling uh, the, uh, the operation of democracy I am not sure. Thank you, uh, Kathy. I I just am going to make a real quick comment. If people look at this schedule, we we have very little time to do any of this. Um, Lynn, has, Lynn has tried to squeeze in. Um, all of our questions are due uh, six days from now, seven days from now, September 5th, whatever we think should be asked. Um, we're going to be meeting six days after that to get the draft of questions from whoever put input in to discuss them again. Candidates are going to be sending us an SOI. They have to, they'll know tomorrow that they have to write something. And then we're going to meet on them six days later. I mean, this is because if we don't, we're going to miss the timeline to appoint for the Ben slot for the each of these slots. We're under the gun to do this. So I think um, we are going to get public comments and the question there, the questions we come up with will generate quite a few. And I think that should be the place where we get whatever we get, however we get it. Um, and I want to assure you, last time around in 2020, 
we had a huge number of emails. We had emails coming in and I was a new counselor. We had emails coming in for people that I didn't even know because they hadn't filed their statement of interest yet. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was really a, oh, um, so we are going to be getting those from the people who are um, starting to campaign for particular candidates. We're, we're, we're going to get a lot of them. I don't think any of us have time for a really, really, really long meeting about specific candidates. So I think the, this question, question time, and there are two points, the 11th and the 18th, they're going to be two entry points, including people can start sending Lynn questions now. You know, they're, whoever is listening, they, that can start right now. Um, I wrote up a draft of a few based on last time around, and that's about as far as I can get. So mine are gonna be in already, um, but all of us need to step up to the plate if we have ideas, because we're in a just a totally different world than we, we should ever have hoped to be. <laughs> Um, or expected to be. And so I just want to stress how short the timeline is. Let me try to summarize where I think we are. Essentially, we have uh, agreed to the change here in terms of the development of questions. Essentially, we may not like it completely, uh, but I will try in addition to providing questions I will try to have a summary of the gazillions of input and people I've talked to uh, or types of people. Uh, the second thing is we will consult with the um, campaign finance, uh, the Department of Campaign Finance and also our town attorney as to the legality uh, around the issue of public comment specifically related to the night of the interviews. Uh, and the third thing is, and I'm going to suggest that Athena and I will discuss various options for voting and we will bring that back to the meeting on the 11th. Does that help people conclude this section so we can move on to the next? I'm Jennifer. So you're going to consult with council and the Office of Campaign and Public Finance, even though I don't think it's necessary, but about whether it's problematic at all to have public comment. And then at the September 11th meeting, are we going to decide then whether there will be public comment at the meeting at which we vote? This September 11th is not the meeting at which we vote. The, yes. the meeting at which we vote is not until the 26th. And at the September 11th meeting, will we be deciding whether or not to have public comment at the meeting in which we vote? I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anika, you have your hand up, but I think it's left up from before. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then we're going to move on to the timeline and make any adjustments to the timeline based on what is here. Are there questions and comments on the timeline? Jennifer, you have your hand up. The um, At this page seven, I believe the deadline to fill the Harrington vacancy is October 2nd, according to my counting, 45 days um, since the vacancy. Um, I could be wrong, because it, it, um, if you earlier it said Harrington submitted his um, resignation six days prior to McDonald, so it makes sense that the date is six days prior. It, it, maybe it doesn't matter, but it is like, an important date because it's the first deadline. But maybe it we is. That. And we'll check those dates again. But the um, the town clerk received the resignation on Friday the 18th. Am I correct, Paul? That's. Oh, I see. But it's, it's effective of, of August 21st, which is only was, three days. Okay, it's the effective date versus the resignation date. Thank you. It was effective the 21st, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mandy Jo. Um, just just one, quest, one, one comment on page six. Um, the SOIs, it's going to be like the third to last bullet point that Wednesday, September 20th, 4 p.m., statements of interest are due. Somewhere yeah. in there, we need to indicate that the clerk forwards all statements of interest to the town clerk for the purposes of confirming eligibility. Um, 
Uh, yes. So, uh, so right after she receives that, we'll insert a bullet there that says the uh, clerk of the town council, Wednesday, September 20th, 2023, 4 o'clock p.m. or 4.05 p.m. EDT, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, the clerk of the town council uh, forwards all statements of interest to the town clerk. Does that take care of it? I used a semicolon just thank you. I, I I'll do I'll do that as they come in, but it, yeah, it I think that's fine. Okay. Are there any other comments on the timeline? Okay, seeing none, then uh we're going to move to the actual advertisement. It's um was drafted, there might be changes, uh, but I'm looking for comments specifically as it relates to uh, page eight and nine. Jennifer. At the bottom of page eight, where it says the new Amherst School Committee members will also serve on, um, I don't think it, and, and it ends with the BCG. I don't think it's necessary to specifically call it the BCG because there are several subcommittees that school committee members may sit on. So I would, I might change that to and other school committee subcommittees instead of and on the town of Amherst budget coordinating group. Okay. I think that's a, a very good suggestion. Uh, we kind of deliberated over that depending on the time of the year, they could, they might also serve on JCPC, but JCPC doesn't meet until after the first of the year. So um, are you? And I have another comment on page nine. Yeah. All right. So in the second paragraph there um interested in serving out the remaining term on the school committee and the relevant skills and experiences they will bring to the body so like having relevant skills and experiences is actually not a requirement to be a school committee member um the only requirement is getting enough votes and, and being a registered voter so someone may want to share their relevant skills and experiences but i don't think we need to ask them to put put it in the letter i would propose changing it to and why they should be selected for the appointment instead of, and the relevant skills and experiences, because then someone who has relevant skills and experiences can share that. But really we wanna hear like, why should it be you? That's it, thank you. Okay, and if there's any disagreement with those changes, please raise your hand. But meantime, I'm going on to Mandy Jo. Yeah, just, just just a couple. Um, it's a special circumstance, and I know we took this from the prior one where there were joint meetings, but because we don't have a quorum of the school committee, I suggest maybe we get rid of the reference to joint meetings and just refer them to special meetings. There's two in the first bolded paragraph on page eight. There's another one on the second bolded paragraph, and then there's one in the second to last paragraph on page nine. Very good. Um, and the, as Athena finds them, um, no, I don't think there's any in that paragraph. I think the only other one, Athena, is in on page nine, the very last big paragraph. Right, right before contact. On the Friday, yeah, those special joint meetings. Um, in the second bolded paragraph on page eight, um, it re references just broadcast to the meeting on live on channel nine. Um, I would put a parentheses S in there in case we have a second special meeting. Um, and then the final one again refers to this who's collecting and submitting to the clerk. So it's the second full paragraph on page nine um, that talk about that starts with the statements of interest once submitted. So they're being submitted to the town you know, clerk of the council. And then it says once submitted, the town clerk will confirm. I suggest once submitted, the clerk of the council will request the town clerk confirm a candidate's eligibility. Yeah, good changes. And I think you just get rid of the that, yeah, that though. And that's it from me. Okay, Jennifer. Sorry, one more thing on page nine, the second to last paragraph, statements of interest will be available to the public on the town website by September 22nd. 
which is which is stated earlier in the timeline. Um, just so that people will know on what date they can go look and see who the candidates are. Um, it's on page. Yeah. Nine. So, I mean, on page six, we do say that they'll be ver verified and you're saying and posted. Yeah. And posted there. Yeah. So, the, okay. so it's, it's, it does say posted for the September twenty September twenty second meeting, but I don't think people necessarily know when that like when, <laughs> just Great. so people will know when they can go look. Yep, got it. Athena, do you have that? Yes. Got it. Good catch. Uh, anything else on this? Okay. Um, I don't feel that this group is, uh, well, I should say, I don't feel that 13 members of this group are 12 tonight. Uh, that excludes Jennifer and Irv. I personally don't have any knowledge that allows me to make any changes to the Amherst School Department description. Uh, I did ask a previous member of the committee to provide updates like when meetings were and so forth and that's what you have before you but if there are changes please let me know and mandy joe um just a couple of questions with it um the should we mention that i think it's three members of the amherst school committee are selected to be union 26 members in that that sort of second paragraph do we want to mention union 26 um i i would leave it up to the school committee members to make that decision but i thought since union 26 might be doing a lot in this time period um it might be wise to mention that the the bullet points there's an extra one that second bullet point is just an, a hanging one i think it should be deleted because it's part of the first bullet um, and I had a question about that because I actually don't know. This all talks about in-person meetings. Um, and so I just wonder if it should, I, I don't know whether the school committees are meeting solely in person or solely virtually or a hybrid method, but whatever method they're currently meeting should probably be listed within those bullet points. I just don't know what that correct listing is. Thank you. Um Jennifer and or perhaps you can answer let's start st let's go back to the form of meeting at this point yeah in, in in terms of uh the union 26 union 26 is composed of three officers from uh Amherst school committee and three officers from the Pelham school committee that's basically and those officers are the chair the vice chair and the secretary. Okay. Jennifer? So I don't think it's necessary to call out Union 26 in this description. It is mentioned earlier and it's true Union 26 is gonna have a lot of work, but like everything Union 26 is gonna do, the regional school committee is also gonna do. So it's not necessarily extra work. So I think it's fine to leave it, leave that section the way it is. Regarding the bullets. So I would strike in the first bullet, I would strike or in the town room at town hall because we don't meet there. And I would also strike the current meeting schedule is posted on the committee webpage because it's not. So I, everything after everything after and including or in the town room or town hall. Uh, yeah. Can we say meeting schedules are generally posted on the committee webpage? <laughs> okay. I mean, I realize they're not now because I went to look the other day. <laughs> are, yeah, you can say generally meeting schedules are generally posted yeah yeah and and you would also want to do the same for the next bullet point at the end the current yeah. change that sentence i have a few more pieces of input once athena's done with this thank you just give us a little moment so take out the word current in that sentence got it okay on the next page under duties, um, I want to add, make or add or edit, I don't know, make hiring decisions regarding the superintendency or regarding the superintendent, because that's going to be something that 
uh, maybe it's a new bullet point. Um, it's said, hiring it's them. Hiring. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And then I think we should add the stipend. Just add that, like, according to the charter, Amherst school committee members receive a whatever, whatever, whatever stipend. It'll be, I assume it'll be prorated or whatever, but just add something about the stipend. Yeah, I think that's a separate question. I think it's a separate paragraph or with one of the others, but not a bullet. Because yeah, no, not, 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 not a duty. Yeah. Not a specific duty. Uh, I've just put it at the very end. The Amherst School Committee, per the charter, whatever it is, we'll find the citation. The Amherst School Committee members receive a stipend. I believe right now it's 3000 and then 4000 for the chair. That's fine. Is that okay, Jennifer? Yes, that looks fine. Okay. Um, all right. Other comments or questions? Irv. Uh, you know, most of those things that you put down there up there are, are come almost directly from the policy manual mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, of of the roles and responsibilities of the uh, school committee member. So I'm totally comfortable with those. And, uh, you know, it's it is there. It's they're part of our policy. Okay. Do you think we should have a link to that policy? I mean, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, it all goes to board docs. So, and on board docs, there's a whole section on policies. Okay, so it's in board docs. Yes. Okay, so we cite board docs up at the very beginning. Right there. There you go. All right. Are there any other comments on the description? Okay. So um, I'm now going to just ask whether anybody feels we need to take a vote on any of this. Like, for example, do we need to take a vote to post the vacancy or do we just Trust that tomorrow morning, Athena and I will make it happen. I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand. Um, believe me, we will make it happen. Um, all right, then let me just say, this has been a very, very good discussion. And I really um want to thank all the counselors and our two school committee members for making time for a special meeting for this very, very important discussion. And I want to note that from different times during the night, we've had about 17 people in the audience, including a couple members of the press. Um, we have reviewed the process, the timeline, the announcement, and the uh, updated school committee description. Uh, I want to encourage you as we have talked earlier today, to please forward all proposed interview questions to me. If you would like to CC Athena, that's always a good idea. And I would like to receive them no, long, no later than Tuesday, September 5th. There will be discussion at the meeting on the 11th and again on the 18th. Uh, we will meet at as a town council, along with the two remaining members of the Amherst School Committee on Tuesday, September 26th at 6 o'clock p.m., at which time we will interview the candidates who have submitted statements of interest and been verified by the town clerk as registered voters in the town of Amherst. If we're unable to complete the interview process and the voting, on September 26th, we will continue the meeting on Monday, October 2nd, 2023 at six o'clock p.m. Are there any questions about key dates or anything else? Okay, seeing none, I again just wanna thank everybody uh, from the council and the school committee. Uh, Kathy? 
I just want to thank you, Lynn and Athena, for the enormous amount of work <laughs> that that you did to get us to tonight. Because I saw the draft a week ago, which was just the old draft. Um, so, so really, thank you a lot. This is enormous, and I'm just trying to figure out how I mark up my calendar to capture all the dates. But thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, um, and. Athena and I jokingly thanked Erica Nakajima for actually <laughs> resigning two, two terms ago because we had something to start with and the select board before that. With that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. The meeting is adjourned at 826. Thank you. <laughs>